you. I want to thank uh, the organization, uh, Mr. Whitman's organization, uh, which has, is doing a marvelous job of uh, getting all the new developments um, into his conferences. I looked at this last night when I arrived, and I was, I was just blown over. Please do read what, what these squares say for the individuals. We've got here a collection of what's new and what has been in development, what's in people's mind, um, and you can come here and hear about it and see it demonstrated as a real, it's, it's more exciting than a geographic magazine. <laughs> and that used to be pretty exciting. So, <laughs> so um, uh, and then there's a kind of a mini conference going on here focused on mercury. Well, that's marvelous. You know, it could have taken another hundred years to get to that point. It should have happened <laughs> a long time ago, but here it is now, and I sure want to go to that, and even the man who really gave it the big push, Hal Huggins, I just think it's fantastic to have the opportunity to listen to him. So <coughs> anyway, that's <coughs> one of the reasons I come, and I think it's why you come too, you want to hear what's new, and what you can use to replace the old clinical style of treatment, which is just treatment. Now you've known, maybe you've seen the newspapers, that we have a new disease on the horizon. Maybe it's um, swine slaughtering syndrome, <laughs> SSS, um, but we're all worried, I think, about new diseases and, and new, new illness and our inability to prevent that. We want to know why we are getting new diseases and why are we all so sick? Why do our children need to be medicated? What we know that somehow our society is getting sicker. But, you know, our, our authorities and agencies don't want us to be too worried about it because they have their status to protect. But I'm sure they're worried too and wondering why we are getting these new diseases. But I have a device that would let you investigate why we have new diseases. And that's what I've been up to. This is the device. It's an electronic kit that works in a way that's different from all other ways used so far. It works like a radio circuit that tunes in to any other circuit that's similar to a radio circuit. I had radio as a hobby through my student years, and that's why I could do such a thing. But if you learn the basics of radio, it becomes perfectly obvious. And any of you who are engineers or in electronic training, you'll see how it works in a flash, and you'll see it demonstrated this afternoon. So everything that I'm telling you that, that has gone into the book was discovered this way, and it doesn't cost $500,000 and take up half a room space. You can do it yourself. I would like to say that all you have to do is turn knobs and everything else is automatic, but it isn't. It's still in the manual stage. I'd like to see the advantage in that, but it's hard, so I won't try. <laughs> At any rate, if it does get automated, uh, then, and if it gets automated by the clinical parties, then you will never
never have a chance to see it again. That is how the EKG and the ECG uh, went. They are nothing but voltmeters, uh, but they are stylized so much that there's no way that you could ever uh, duplicate what you expect to see. And so I would like to say, please learn the manual method and, and investigate for yourself when you have a question. And if the question is, why do we have this new disease? The answer is on page 12 of this new concepts handout. I haven't written this for you to read yet, so that's why I'm talking about it. But all the diseases that are a syndrome, which means that the symptoms are the same from person to person, all the diseases that fall in that category, it's hard to think of some that don't, but if you ask yourself, are different people getting this disease and it has similar symptoms, then it will be in this format and cancer is just one of these diseases. So it took quite a long time to discover that because I'd have to search for each item in every, in the disease that I'm looking into. And I've only looked into about five or six diseases so far that have a syndrome to them. So you can see there might be a category of diseases that is different, but chances are pretty good that it will be this format. And here you see that it starts with polonium at one end, which is a radioactive element. When this radioactive element gets to your DNA and attaches itself, it will cause mutations. That's why people get the same symptom from person to person. That part of the illness is due to polonium. So in every person with that disease, if you were to investigate with this device, you would see that their saliva is just loaded with polonium. Now, where are they getting that polonium? But that's the next question the next level of questioning. The next item is cerium. Cerium is an element that's not radioactive, but it's very reactive chemically. So that polonium, if there is any around, will combine with cerium in just a flash like hydrogen and oxygen would. So th that, so when you're running into a source of polonium, chances are it has already attached itself to some cerium. Cerium comes in our environment mostly from rubber and plastic. Now we think that's pretty harmless, and it probably is if it didn't heat. But if you're investigating with a device like this, which is so sensitive that it's at least a million times more sensitive than any chemistry could be, you find that just about everything does heat. A few things don't using this standard. Parts per quintillion. A few things do not heat to that extent. The, the modern stainless steel that has been developed in the last five to 10 years is not keeping the things that I'm searching for to that level, which makes it very unusual and very good. All, everything else that you can think of uh, cheats, but, but everything is a big word. The only way to really know for your particular piece that you're interested in would be to test with this. And you would just put your object, if you have a wonderful object that you're drinking out of, 
for the sake of sentimentality or something, or wearing it for the sake of sentimentality or something. You could uh, just make a little rubbing off it, put that in a, a small container, a little plastic bag, use this device with it the way I'll show you this afternoon, and you can tell if it's seeping just in a minute. So that's, that puts it into your hands, and that's where I like it to be. The next item, notice that this is a kind of a chemical collection of things that attaches to each other. So the next item is ferrocyanide. And that is the cause, the ultimate cause, of our new diseases. But of course, the rest of these things are part of the cause. Something that we could do we cannot abolish the polonium coming up from the earth. We cannot abolish the cerium coming up from the earth. It comes up from the radioactive rocks down there. But we could abolish the cyanide in our water. So the new diseases, all of them, that we are getting, and the increased degree of illness, that we're experiencing, including our children, is due to directly, not indirectly, the cyanide in our water. A hundred percent of our water has cyanide into it, I in it. It is there to protect the pipes. The pipes, when they were made of metal, need protection if you're going to have something corrosive in them. But if they were made of plastic, they wouldn't need protection. At least not cyanide kind of protection. So I think that it would be just wonderful if we got a groundswell of opposition to putting cyanide in all our water. You can find more information on cyanide and pipe protection and such things on the internet. Uh, there's no secret about it, and there's no secret that it's classified as a toxin, as a pollutant also, although in this case, it's put there, it's not a pollutant. It has been thought for a hundred years that there is so little toxicity that it couldn't matter, but of course, the disease, new diseases we get, we think couldn't, couldn't happen either. These things can happen and do happen if they can happen, and it's up to us to use our best imagination and skills to prevent it for our children's sake. So, so far now, our new diseases all have gotten us through cyanide. Why does cyanide play this very important role of causing our diseases? I will get to that as soon as I finish this part. 